Welcome to our Over It podcast. I'm your host or co-host, Christine Kershaw, and joining me is Suzanne Kulberg. Today we've got a really juicy topic, and it's, is the coaching industry a pyramid scheme? Well, there's a bit to that, right? Because, Suze, the coaching industry is unregulated at, at its core, and so someone can call themselves a coach no matter what training they've done, they could have got a $10 course off Udemy or wherever, really, or they could have done years worth of developing skills and heaps of interpersonal things and like different techniques and be really, really experienced and qualified. But how do you know that it's not just some big sell? And because I'm sure heaps of the listeners may consider, well, I wouldn't mind getting some coaching, but how how do I know that they're really going to be able to help me? How do I know it's not just some big money suck, right? It's it's the great question. And there's two ways or things to consider from approaching this. The first is as a consumer. So whether you're a listener who is looking to purchase coaching or hire a coach. And the second is, you know, I'm sure we've got lots of fellow coaches who also listen to our podcast. Shout out to you guys. Um And, you know, whether you're looking to invest in another training and, you know, adding a tool to your tool belt, you know, is it worth your time, money and energy in that program as a participant? So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a fabulous topic because we see so many ads promoting the dream, the laptop lifestyle, the work, you know, part-time, make money in your sleep, passive income, one size fits all, funnels, like, you you know, you make something and then suddenly you're a millionaire. And, you know, the harsh reality is it doesn't go that way. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of the time people might be naturally drawn to it because they're someone who wants to help others. And you may already be, again, no matter which one this you fit into as far as, hey, you might be looking for coaching yourself but thinking one day you might want to do a course as well. Like there's lots of different ways to look at that. But you might be going, I talk to people and I see a change in them so much already. I'd really like to do a course in this to then one day help them. So this is where we're talking to you from that point of view of just be aware because the adage of if it seems too good to be true, it probably is it really can ring true for this as well. And that's not to say that there aren't some great courses out there which might cost a a significant investment, which can be absolutely life-changing and truly be a great course. Or there can be some that are more budget-friendly that may teach you some really good things, but that's not going to make someone a great coach necessarily either. And also too, sometimes people are... I'm trying to think of a word. So one of the very first coaches I worked with as a client, so I was a client long before I became a coach. And some of you may be both like I'm a, I'm a coach, but also have coaching. Like I'm going to be lifelong working with the coach personally. They said they had worked with somebody quite high up in the industry, like a really well-known name. And I took that to mean had worked with them as in had trained, like when you say trained under them to me, that they would know who you are. Later, I turned out that they'd read their book. Now, in my way of looking at things, but then again, I don't think people are being deliberately nefarious, but it's like, what is the definition of have worked with? Like if someone Mm. says, I've worked with Suzanne Kohlberg, in my point of view, I would know who you are. Like, oh yeah, hi, Christad. But if you've read my book, that wouldn't be working with me because that's reading my book. It's a great book, by the way, shameless plug. But you know what? (laughs) What is the thing that you're investing in? What And if you're going to ask what kind of training have they done, like sometimes, you know, we, like I'm thinking FBI badge type energy, like, you know, you flash the badge. People could literally flash the certificate, but hell, you can make a certificate on Canva. It ain't that hard. Even me with my very limited tech skills could probably handle that. <laughs> so I yeah. think what we were trying to talk to here is unveiling or behind the scenes, like Wizard of Oz style of something that is an unregulated industry because coaching is fabulous. And I really believe I'm passionate about taking people from where they are to where they want to go, but within the scope of what you're capable of helping with. And when you're not capable knowing when to refer out or refer to a different service, like, you know, um, therapy counseling and something else entirely. Yeah, for sure. 
And there are some great organizations out there who do coaching programs where they, for instance, you might hear of an opportunity to work with someone who's just doing some test runs, some trial as a part of reaching their certification. So that back, it's quite scary for me, but at the time of recording, nearly six years ago, I was about to embark on doing a course in becoming a life coach. And it was a five-day, very intensive course. And it was transformative for me at the time. It was being done parallel to me also learning uh, the RCP consulting side of things as well. So it was a very intense part of my life generally. But we did that five-day intensive and then five, seven-day might have been. Um, and then we had weekly coaching for 11 weeks after that and within that time I also then went and did it like a practical thing where I sourced people that I knew many of them friends and I did practice runs but I was fully up front going this is a practice run you're under no obligation to have to work with me after this but it was a way for me to practice my skills so sometimes you might hear of things like that and we're not here to say that they're not a real uh, uh, what do you call it coaching uh, session yeah, it's not a real thing or whatever, but the people will normally, and what I love is, will say, I remember myself, this is to help me learn and to get my skills up. I'm not going to say that I have every um, every T crossed and dot, dotted I's done, but I'm learning my skill. And that can be a great way that you may come across an organisation, both as someone that may want to get coached, but also to see the process of gaining those skills for someone if they're considering doing training because it, you know, it gives comes, you a little taste. Sorry to interrupt. You know what comes to mind when I think about that? Uh, apprentice hairdressers. Like yeah. if you go to a hairdressing studio and they sell on, parlor, whatever they call it, yeah. and they have a trainee there, they'll say, you know, $10 haircut or discount because we're having our apprentice or whatever and then how far along they are. So a lot of the coach certifications is the one you mentioned I've done two, I've done lots, but two really big coaching programs, both of which required, one of them required 50 hours and the other one required 80 hours. And um, one of them was unpaid because it was for, you know, brand new coaches. And then, yeah. you know, the people knew that they were getting the coaching for free in exchange for feedback or, you know, whatever it is. And then the other one, because it was an advanced certification, like on the back of something else, um, we could do them free or paid. I personally did them paid, but I let people know it was a discounted rate because I was practicing some new techniques. So um, there's something about, I think with anything about transparency mm. and, you know, not saying that you have to give your work away or discount your work if it's new, like if you're solid and you're happy to keep the prices, like that's the individual's choice. But cause like there was another one, like a modality I have not trained in. Is Whoa, there is one. There is one. <laughs> kinesiology shout out to my kinesiologist friends out there and listeners if we have any and I think one of the the downsides sometimes of seeing a trainee or person you know learning a skill is we can get a not clear picture of the modality because we've mm. been with a trainee so basically what happened was I, I knew very little about kinesiology my friend was like hey I'm training to be a kinesiologist and I need to do so many practice sessions you interested and I was like and she told me what it helped with and I was like yeah sure okay and anyway the whole time she's like can't get a balance can't get a balance have you had uh, kinesiology Chris yeah yeah, I have. yeah so I left the session thinking holy crap I'm unbalanced like <laughs> all jokes aside like it was not a I didn't leave feeling safe or taken care of or looked out for. So what I loved, especially in my advanced certification that we did was, you know, being mindful of where you leave the client and the words you use. It takes me back to medical school days when we're learning to examine mm -hmm. someone, like when you're learning to examine a belly or, you know, a breast, any part of the body that you're examining for lumps, bumps and things. If you go back because you don't know what you felt because you're still learning or whatever, that patient is suddenly imagining cancer. Like you can see their brain go there. But to say to them, I'm really new at this, I'm, you know, just whatever, so that they know, like, please don't panic. And you have your consultant there or you have your person there. So sometimes, you know, with the coaching industry being unregulated and not often having the higher up there, because it's often recorded for that person to watch in their own time, there yeah. isn't that level of safety because, yeah, I left that whole thing thinking, A, kinesiology was a quack and B, 
you know, I'm unbalanced. It wasn't, it didn't leave me feeling good about that as a potential (laughs) thing as a client going forward. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that leads me into the next section. So my experience was very transparent, very much. I've gone away to do a course. I've come back with some great tools to then apply and then learning how to apply them with clients. And it was a process over time. It was like a six month support thing. Then you get programs that train people to have a script where they then go and friend everybody on Facebook that they can find wherever without, I literally, so for anyone who wants to become my friend on Facebook, if we don't know each other, you can see on my profile and every now and then I bump it now. It was a good couple of years ago I recorded. It comes from kindness. I don't become friends with everybody who sends me a request on Facebook. I, if I have a true connection with them, whether it's through work, potentially, kids, whatever, maybe. But if you just cold call, so to speak, if you just uh, become my friend and you haven't watched the video where I say, hey, this is reserved for people close to me or people who I have built a rapport with, then that's an automatic no. And so because it's my space, right, I don't mind connecting with you through Uh, my business page on Facebook or my business email or whatever for work-related things. But if you're not my friend or connection, then that's my boundary on my personal space. So if I get people who friend me on Facebook and I look at their profile and they've got multiple coaching things or they've got inspirer of freedom, I know what's likely to come, right? They'll either hit me up with a private message soon after saying, do you want some more spare time or whatever? And it's really slimy. It's not cool. And it's like they want to stalk my profile for a while and then wait until they go in for the proverbial kill to go, yeah, here's a training thing. Here's a, I'd love to work with you. It's only going to cost you this much. Here's an opportunity I think would be wonderful for you. So, If someone hits you up and you don't know them and you have no, even if you've got mutual friends, because that's the other thing, I look and a lot of them have got mutual friends who are all in the coaching industry. I'm like, please, if you're considering both, if you're in this kind of realm and you're doing this to people, you're turning people off. Build rapport in other ways. There are so many other things that you can do. But if you're the recipient of this, it can make you feel really nice that someone has approached you and said, hey, you've got, I see we've got this in common or whatever. And they'll not to say the person themselves is not kind or genuine or whatever on some level, but that message at that time is more than likely going to be something that's scripted that may not have really great, great deep connection time and can end up, oh, oh, well, we can start with this really cheap thing and, Here's this big package, but, you know, you don't have to go there now. We've got payment plans. We'll come back to that later. Just worry about. Actually, I'm going to jump in here because, you know, we topic topic titled this is Coaching and Pyramid Scheme. Another one of my early introductions, and I won't not name the company because, you know, liable and stuff. But back in 2017, just after I worked with the other coach who trained with this famous person, i.e. read their book, um, they had a free weekend. So it was like a free, you know, weekend that you could attend. So my friend and I attend, attended, attended, attended. I can't English today, but I'm sure I trust you guys, you know, understand what I'm saying, picking up what I'm putting down. And then from there, the upsell to that was $3,000. And they were good. They were really good at selling that. I remember in the break ringing my husband, who was like, no, we are not buying this. Thank goodness. Shout out to Jeremy. He's got the best boundaries known to man. And my friend bought it. And then there was a series of weekends. I can't remember if there was three or four of them. And on the third one, so the second to last, whether there was three or four, they were allowed to bring a friend for free, you know, because Mm -hmm. they'd bought it. So my friend brought me, which, you know, thank you so much. I really appreciated it. And that was slick. So the upsell from that one was 10 grand. And I was sitting there, you know, I was a little bit more savvy. This is like a year later and a bit more things under my belt. My friend once again purchased that. And then 
went to this 10 grand, it was, it was a two or four day thing. And it's funny when she was at that, I was also attending a coaching thing for a certification I was doing. So we'd shared accommodation in the city together. And I remember the first night we were back and we're having dinner together. And she was telling me about the the third level of this thing, which was how much do you reckon, Christian? Uh, $30,000? 50. Ooh. And anyway, by this stage, I was like, get out. And she was like, oh, well, I could just sell my car. Like, I don't really need it. I could, I'm like, don't. And usually I'm a little bit less, you know, forceful, but I was like, okay, I was like, pause. How much return on investment have you received from this already? Like, how much money have you made? Oh, oh, nothing yet, but I just need this next level. And, you know, we had some back and forth. And to this day, she says, thank goodness for you, Suze. Like I would have sold my car and got a couple of credit cards and maxed them all. But then she did know someone who did go to this. And then there was another upsell again from that, which was like a private weekend on some fancy island out in, you know, helicopters and whatever. I was like, when does it end? And And what do they actually get from this? Is it, is there any actual tangible trainings or skills or whatever or is it basically some kind of weird like uh what do you call it uh golf club what do you call it country club like membership oh, yeah. there was different levels of bands that they got and ties that they got showing how much they'd invested and it, it was almost some kind of weird kind of cultish vibes if i'm honest mm. and this is the thing right the takeaways there aren't like the actions to do your friend didn't get enough from that to be able to be starting her coaching business or to be confident in it at any rate. And I've, I have a hunch, I think you may have told me before, but I have a hunch on who like the organization and stuff that that's connected to. And I've been to one of the early level ones of that. And this, the speakers that they can have at some of these events are really interesting and you can take away a lot from it, but interwoven with, the transformational speeches are upsells into potentially multiple other things, at least at the one I went to. Run to the back of the room, limited things. As soon as you have to run, as soon as it's limited, like once again, I don't knock me a a limited time offer. At the time of recording this, I have a limited time offer out. Like for the people on my list, um, there's no point saying it because it'll be gone by the time it goes live, but it is limited time. If you don't action it today, you miss out. Like boundary held. But these things are never limited. They're just to get you out of the chair or to get you over the line because guess what? Yeah. Tomorrow they'll do the same spiel in a different state or you'll get an email going, oh, I know you were interested. So guess what? We've opened more spaces. Like an yeah. expiring offer is only expiring if it actually expires and has a real deadline. Absolutely. And this is, and it can really paint the big dreams. And again, that's not to say that there are some coaches that genuinely can offer you And like Susan and I, right, we offer in our own coaching that we can help keep you accountable, help teach you things about yourself and your situation and all that. They're not promises that we make lightly as far as, and it's limited by what you're willing to push through on a ceiling too. Like it's a a push-pull, right? We, In a coaching relationship, it is you as a coach provide guidance and mentoring and you're a bit more objective because you're not deep in the hole potentially where your client might be and you're giving them lifelines to help them help themselves out. But if you're being promised all these big shiny things of, you know, lifestyle things and whatever, you really need to have caution because those can be pyramid schemes or can expect more and more and more. And also I'd say to that end, if it seems very much like they're promising you a lot and they're not saying about what you need to contribute beyond money, that's where you start to go. Because any coaching relationship, it's you are dancing a tango with your coach. It is not just the coach. These these companies can be preying on the fact that you want the silver bullet to help fix your problems. Whereas in any coaching relationship, you need to be ready to do some work as well. It's not one-sided. I love that. So the the difference, I think, because Chris, Chris Dan and I both agree that, you know, coaching isn't a pyramid scheme, but it can be seen as one or, you know, in certain circumstances. But the point that you're really saying to there, how I would describe it is, is this a fit? 
because coaching mm. isn't like here, I'm going to sell you a wedding dress or a wedding cake or whatever. And you part with the cash and then I bestow my brilliance onto you and huzzah, you are fixed fairy godmother style. A, you're not broken, but B, you know, is it a fit for the co-creation? Like beyond the money, what is the time expectancy? Because that's the other thing too. I remember my friend when she bought these different levels, uh, as I said, it was way back 2016. Now we had CDs back then. It was before everything went full digital and she got the, all these hours and hours and hours of CDs. So, and then there was some sort of guarantee, but it was really um, fine line. If you read it, how she had to do whatever to access this guarantee, but do you have time to listen to 50 hours of CDs in the next? Cause I think the money back guarantee was only 28 days. So do you have time to listen to 50 hours of CDs in 28 days and action all the stuff that needs to have been actioned to potentially, because, you know, basically I like to say, don't get sucked in by a money back guarantee. Like there yeah. are legitimate, honest ones, but there are ones that the loopholes, like um, I remember, I don't know if it was you and I were talking about this or someone else, but they did a coach training that, no, it wasn't a coach training. It was a marketing training to sign clients or whatever. And it was a guaranteed whatever. And to get the money back, it was a very significant investment. They had to have made a hundred cold calls, which is probably where some of these weird DMs come in, you know. And the thing is, you had to give that cold call information to your supervisor, leader, trainee. First of all, look at the legalities of that. Because that is mm-hmm. handing over somebody's private information, their email address and potentially their phone number. Like, do you have permission to share that? That's, you know, whatever. But then if you didn't convert and get the sale, then they had all the details so they could start hounding the person. When does it end? Yeah. yeah. If your gut feel in it is it feels too good to be true, just don't ignore that because there likely is someone who will fit your budget who will be there to help you, guide you where you need to be, who is not going to make empty promises and who will negotiate with you as far as what does your package look like? What does your opportunity look like? And it may be in a set format. That's not to say that there can't be levels of rigidity or like structure, but it if it's a coach who's really looking to tailor and to work with the clients, then they're going to be going, let's do this because this is going to work towards this. This is going to work towards that. There's not the mystery around it. I mean, obviously, they're not doing the coaching before you've made a commitment anyway because that's boundaries and that's important too. But I really think sometimes, again, the pyramid scheme style coaching is much more likely, oh, well, we'll cover that later. Oh, well, well, you know, there is no outline. The training that I got was there was... It's been a while. I think it's a 11 or 12 step sort of thing that we worked through. We were fully upfront right from the beginning what those were. Now we didn't go into details, but if someone was wanting to understand what they got for the multi-session plan that we were working on, if they were becoming a client, then we were absolutely upfront with what that meant, what the payment options were. Like there's nothing hidden behind, oh, well, we'll get to that bit later. Yeah, I love that. So beyond the investment of dollars, the investment of time, like that's a, a wonderful question to ask if you don't see it answered anywhere clearly on the on their resources. And also they might not say this, like I don't think even I say this clearly. I do say the time on my website it says, you know, what's the time commitment for why wait, what I recommend. The investment of energy, because often mm. if it's a pyramid type energy for me, like what I feel is it's the urgency, do it now, expiring offer, it's never going to happen again, whatever. But like, even though my program is called Why Wait and the under thing of it is what are you waiting for? There are times when it legitimately isn't the right time for somebody. They are finishing up another program. They are working with another coach. Like they have their time invested somewhere else. Totally come for the next round because you do you have the capacity to get the most from this? And even if there's promises of recordings and stuff, for me, everyone's different. Like I know some people live purely by the recording and they love that. The live aspect is very important to me as both a facilitator and a, a consumer. 
but you know, to be able to get your coaching on what you've listened or watched, that to me, that's a large part of why I invest rather than passive products that just you know pre-recorded. But you know, if it's and then, oh, one thing we haven't even touched on, and it's kind of like the value add. So say the program is this many dollars, and then they're like, this is valued at a thousand, and this is valued at five thousand, this is valued at ten thousand, and you have like, you know, and you might think I'm exaggerating listening to this, but I remember seeing once not that long ago, I added it up, and it was forty eight thousand dollars in bonuses for this program that was like nine ninety seven. And to me, I'm like, if it's worth 48000 why can't you just sell it for that? Like, I, I I love me a good bonus. Like, the current one I have right now is is worth 500 so that's, you know, decent. But I've actually sold it for that, so there, there's one. And, you know, that's an actual thing. But if it's adding up and adding up and adding up, and it's, you know, 48000 for nine ninety seven, to me, that gives me pyramid vibes. What about you? Yeah, yeah, totally. And we haven't even actually, you, you led me just before that, I was like, we haven't even covered um, an actual pyramid scheme, scheme. Just be aware there are actual coaching things that are like this where come and learn how to do this. And part of your get rich quick thing, part of your build your business is, oh, well, you'll be able to bring on coaches in your team and then they'll be able to bring you income that's passive income. And then they'll bring in more Okay, so there's pyramid schemes, there's multi-level marketing, and there are some very popular things out and around which genuinely can bring you money where people can make the choice to become part of your business. And it isn't a uh, illegal, you know, thing. And they can genuinely, especially a lot of the time it's marketed at stay-at-home mums or mums wanting to, or carers, anyone wanting to earn some part-time money as a side hustle or whatever. There are some of those which genuinely can bring you additional just keep in mind it's never without needing to put effort in. Um, mm-hmm. There's one that I think both of us used to do a very long time ago, which is not multi-level marketing or whatever in the pyramid scheme side of things. But you have to put in work to make that a success. It is not without putting significant effort in both as an individual or if you want to become a team leader or, or whatever the term might be at the time. So just keep in mind, we're not saying that none of those things out there they're not so much coaching but there's still ways to here look here's some easy income for your family you still need to put work into it and you soon will realize as you do training and that that there is effort that needs to go in whereas the very first training is make a list of everybody you know and you're suddenly having to dm and cold call someone you haven't seen since high school and you're suddenly inviting them to some sort of demonstration if that is within your pleasure have at it. But if the, if any of it makes you cringe inside from the beginning or you would not want to be on the receiving end of that, hi, Suzanne, haven't seen you since high school. Do you want to come? You know, if that makes you want to die inside, then like run at the get-go. <laughs> it is, it, it suits some people and they love it and thrive. And the skills that I learned in what I did a number of years ago, Absolutely. But then I never crossed into the slimy, I'm going to cold call everyone. I offered it. If they weren't interested, that's fine. And I love that though, because you can offer it. Like if you have a platform, everyone has a Facebook account. You have a platform. I often post about my business or my personal profile or things I'm interested in. Shout out to Claire Riley, who recently wrote a book. I posted a picture. I shared about that. Yeah. Here's one you prepared (laughs) earlier. Like, you know, something like that, that's, you know, legitimate, genuine, and that feels good to me, then yes. But I didn't go and PM, DM 50 of my friends going, hey, Claire wrote a book, you know, who's Claire and what? So it's kind of like how, you know, so that's the other thing too. You don't need to do, like when you approach these things, teacher's pet kind of energy, you could be like, actually, I would love this aspect because the organization you were speaking about that both of us were consultants for, they had levels of how much you could invest in how you wanted to provide the product. Some of which went down the line of, you know, DM everybody, you know, and their cousins. And Mm -hmm. I was just like, yeah. And I think you get, don't discount what you learn from some of these things because sometimes you do trial it and you're like, I tried that and I loved it. Or I tried that and I learned why I don't like these things because even in whatever type of business that you have, like even it's so funny, I was talking to a client the other day, 
even if you're not in business, you're always marketing something. Like I'm mm-hmm. selling my kids this morning on doing their homework. There was no money exchanged, but you know, I was totally selling them on that because the long-term benefits I see of them being able to research and work out things for themselves rather than passively taking on what they've been told, which you know, you and I have both spoken about on our careers type episode we did. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And there's so much in what I learned, so I didn't cold call anyone or at least apologies if anyone listens to this who knows me and goes, yes, you did. I don't <laughs> believe that I did. <laughs> um, but I shared what I was passionate about and there were some people who were also passionate about that and they found it interesting and then they did buy from me in that. I was actually, re- and I say actually in that, I was really successful at what I did. I did it for four years and I sold a notable amount of what I was selling but I didn't go out there being slimy about it. And I was able to use the skills and the training to take it on in my own realm. And I think that's important for people. It challenged me, it pushed boundaries. And this is a difference, right? If you're being told, I remember um, there was a multi-level marketing thing, which is still legal, but it was really close to multi-level marketing when my husband and I were pretty young out of uni type days. So we're looking 20 something years ago. And it was, here, sell these products. There's some great cleaning things. There's some great household things and all sorts of stuff that everybody knows it's a household brand and the kit is just this much and then you can get discounted stuff for your own use at home and and you can build a business because you can get other people selling it underneath you. It's just passive income, you know, it'll be okay. We didn't know any different. And there were some products that we liked and that's what we mostly used it for. And we sold bits and pieces to people as well, but it wasn't, that was not us. We didn't have a passion for that. That was not us in within us. We weren't even married yet then. It was that long ago. Um, and we've been married 20 years later this year. So yeah, it was a while ago. But whereas the other business that you and I were both in, that was a whole different kettle of fish because it was something that I was passionate about. It wasn't dirty multi-level marketing. It was take the business how you want to take it. I think a lot of coaches leaning it back to coaching or leading it back to the things. It's kind of like, I think where a lot of us lose sight of is what is the vision for ourselves in creating the thing? So, you know, with the product based ones, it's like, if you sign up as a consultant or whatever, you get the discount and then you can offer the opportunity. They always call it the opportunity to your friends and family. And then somehow, like I did one of those ended up with a team of over 30 and kind of felt pressured to, grow it more than I wanted to. Like it was packaged or sold to me as here's the stuff you use for your family and you might make a few bucks. And then it became pressure to turn up to these trainings and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I didn't have the boundaries that I have now. It'd be a very different experience if that kind of thing happened right now. But in terms of, of coaching as well, and you know, whether you're wanting to experience coaching as a client or to become a coach yourself, there is a difference between coaching, like coaching the who, meeting the person where they're at, having a truly in-depth space holding, listening, asking questions about their experience versus trying to pigeonhole them into a script where you ask mm-hmm. questions, where you're looking for them to answer in a certain way so you can move that script forward. So like, you know, not to knock you to me or any of these, you know, cheaper platforms because they do have fabulous things. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you're given a, a bunch of scripts, and then the person doesn't answer how you had expected and you haven't had some of the bigger level trainings where you're told what to do when the person goes off script because often we can predict what a person's going to say but not always then mm. you kind of left in my you know you're not balanced kinesiology experience which isn't good for anybody <laughs> for sure and that's exactly the direction I was heading right whether we're talking about this multi-level style rather than the other businesses we shared experiences of, but in coaching, oh, well, you can come along to coaching and then you'll get some more experience and then you can bring a friend along and, you know, up it that way. If you can connect with your coach and they can give you that realistic experience and you, with most coaches, you'll be able to book in for a discovery call or they'll call it different things. Mine is a consult advice call. It's a 15 minute chat for me where people can talk to me and go, are we a good fit? Does it do, you know, the way we talk with each other, does that feel right? But also go, this is my expectation as in me, as the practitioner going, this is the testing that we recommend. This is this I'm available from here. This is what the consult options are. 
and then you to go, well, I really want to look at this and this, and I want to understand this. Is this a, a good match? It's that, again, it's a tango, right? It's understanding the match. If you don't get that opportunity with a coach in some way, then that's something you want to feel secure in this so that you feel safe, that you don't walk out of it going, oh, am I really going to get my money? Sweat? But even on those, like I reckon we could do a whole episode because I'm just looking at time. I need to pick the kids up soon because I'm nothing if not honest. But there's a difference between a legitimate, like I know your business supporting balance has that, you know, 15 minute, is this a fit? Like what, what what's shaking kind of call? I think you guys, yes. you call a discovery call? Uh, consult advice call. Consult yeah. advice call. But other places where it legitimately is a sales call and they yeah. sell hard and they push all your buttons and so or, or it's sold as a freebie. Um, like it's really interesting. I did one of these as a client for somebody. They offered me a gift. I met them in a networking thing. Very long story short, it was towards the end of last year. It was not a pleasant experience. And because I've trained in a lot of this, like I know the cues and I know the tells. And when they got to the bit where like they're supposed to be really quiet, so then, then I jump in and ask, well, I wasn't interested. So I was quiet and they were quiet and I was quiet. It was the weirdest thing. And then how they kept trying to sell to me at the end and there was no permission. There was no, is this a fit? There was no, it was really kind of awkward. And now I do have very strong boundaries. And I was like, you know, basically I'm just not interested. Whole, you know, different experience there. But before I'd be handed over my credit card. Like I nearly spent $3,000 that other thing, you know, way back then. And mm -hmm. it wasn't even aligned. And that poor friend who I mentioned who'd spent the 3,000 then the 10,000 and wanted to spend the 50 didn't actually end up pursuing coaching, went back to their nine to five. And I'm sure that's okay, but oh, she would have made a hell of a coach. Like, mm. you know, and if you listen to this, you know who you are and you still will be. I'm holding out the hope. My vision is I reckon you'll come back into it and you'll smash it. But sometimes people are dissuaded from a career or dissuaded from participating in a modality because of the experience that didn't sit well. And that doesn't, just to finish that off and round off the session, if you've had a bad experience, like your example with kinesiology or with a coach in the past, please don't let that exclude you from finding your coach. If you still have that niggle that you want to work with someone or you still have that niggle that you want to work in that, just put the feelers out there, put the energy out there, whatever of the right fit will come and be open that that may not have been at the right time, the right person. And maybe you've spent money on one of these other coaching schemes and you didn't get anywhere. There can be someone who's sitting there right now ready, who is a beautiful match, who will be a whole different experience. So consider that that may be an option. Did you know, I don't know if we've had this conversation before, maybe we could talk about this on another episode. My very first experience coaching as NLP, like NLP, the modality, I absolutely hated it and swore off it. And then later, another coach I'd hired, uh, they didn't put in any of their marketing, they did NLP. And when we started in the session, I was like, this is NLP, isn't it? And they're like, well, why? Yes, why? I'm like, oh, I think it's crap. And now, many years later, I am trained in as one of my certifications. So don't let an early experience dissuade you from something that could be amazing because it's not that there's ever any bad coaches per se but if somebody isn't a fit for you you can judge a whole modality on one experience like the kinesiology one though I have since worked with a kinesiologist which I loved but you know don't let one experience color that whole industry for you and you know if you've had experience with coaching it's felt like it's been a pyramid scheme or it felt like it's been kind of the sleazy dm salesy thing um not everybody is like that yeah for sure Sweet. Absolutely. Well, thank you for listening. As always, if you have any feedback, please tag us. Please share up the episodes, leave us a rating and review. And um, yeah, we'll see what we uncover next time. Thanks for coming, listening, or watching. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>